So as you take this time to settle and let your energies detach from going out toward uh, the realms of objects and appearances, as you let that energy recede and inhabit a greater sense of what's looking, what's perceiving, what's listening, what is aware of these appearances, the more you get a sense of your eternal nature. Now, as you relax more into listening, or let's say into meditation, or you physically relax more and settle, you might notice that that sense of the observer, that sense of the one who is aware, uh, becomes more simple. It, it, it leaves the, all the descriptors of, of what's occurring out here. And it's as though the mind can become more still and detached from labeling, you know, what it hears, what it sees, what it perceives. It can detach from the business of narrating your experiences and asserting your preferences and thought or things like that. So the more the mind uh, recedes back to the sense of subject, the you that is aware of appearances, the more the mind does tend to quiet and the more that your body energetically settles down, the more the mind settles down and is less, you know, busy and less in the movement of referencing this or that or, or even referencing the subject that we call you. And so the more you get a sense of, of pure being, you could say, just being, that's not necessarily being the subject that's, you know, listening or watching the, the world of objects that are coming and going, but just simply being, the more that sense of subject and object falls away and there's simply the arising of the moment as a whole without it being divided up by the referencing mind. And so the more you, you go with this type of exercise, this might even be the way you start your meditations as you invite your body to settle and your energies to recede from being pumped out into activity. You might feel uh, that this is very, very familiar. And so as this happens, this kind of pulling away from specificity and tracking all the specificity into a more general sense of this moment, the more there's, there can be a, a subtracting out of um, descriptors, as I said earlier, but also a, dis, a subtracting out of any sense of uh, the personal experience. It becomes more of a quiet experience of the quiet looking out your eyes and that settled stillness or peace um, expressing in your being. And so this sense of being that is, in, in a way it feels more un, uh, unconditioned. It's not so conditioned by all the qualities that we assign everything. It may still have those qualities, but the part of the mind that references all of the specific conditions and qualities and, and is narrating that or tracking that, all of that comes to rest. So there's this more sense of seam, seamless moment. And in that um, quality of being less conditioned of uh, experience, the conditions kind of fall away into the simplicity of the moment, the more you get a sense of this ground of being that expresses prior 
to all the the assigned characteristics and specific um, entities of this person or that person or this creature, or that creature, or this thing or that thing, or myself as this role or that role or this identity or that identity, as all that conditioned sense of habitually relating to ourselves and others and to life settles, we enter into the unconditioned. Now, of course, you can't take this too literally, because as I said, you know, what what is, you know, green in front of you or what is blue, you know, is still that color. And yet there can be this sense of perceiving that feels more unconditional. And I believe that it's really what's pointed to also as an as a aspect of what we might call unconditional love. There can be a sense of um, that love expressing without the conditions of the personal personality and its preferences and agendas and and um, you know ways that it wants to insist on certain outcomes. And so there's this sense of the unconditioned that um, is a hallmark of greater stillness. And it's this unconditioned sense of being that many people are speaking about when they refer to the ground of being. It's that sense of the neutral ground prior to you know, all the specifics that, that our minds just quickly extrapolate and assign to whatever's before us or our hearts quickly, you know, place upon um, our experience. Now, it's nothing wrong with these functions of mind and heart, but for the purpose of this talk, I'm, I'm pointing to a certain perspective that is more of the unconditioned state. And sometimes Adi has beautifully called it, you know, the, the immaculate. You could think of it as this sense of the um, immaculacy of being. And so this is a, a way to sense what is um, pointed to in these in beautiful teachings throughout history where there's this pointing to the ground. And you could think of it as the the holy ground, the the sacred. And um, we have, of course, other ideas of the holy ground. Um, But for the purpose of this talk, just to give you a flavor of what I'm pointing to so you could try it on for size, it's that sense of this immaculate ground that's that's pristine without being overlaid upon. 